Welcome everyone to our Eucharistic celebration. This Thursday on the fourth week, an ordinary time. During this Holy Eucharist, we pray for the intentions of our parishioners here at Cristo Rey and Santissimo Salvador de Mundo. We pray for those who are sick, those who are in pain, and those who are suffering, especially our brothers and sisters who have no one to pray for them. Today, we remember them. See, I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we now pause for a moment of silence and ask God for his pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Beloved, Unlike those at Mount Sinai, you have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that, no, not, that not another word be spoken to them. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response to God's word, we all say, God, in your temple, we ponder your love. God, in your temple, we ponder your love. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth. God, in your temple we ponder your love. Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. Within its citadels, God has shown himself a sure defense. God, in your temple we ponder your love. As we have heard, so we have seen, in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God establishes forever. God, in your temple we ponder your love. We ponder your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your name, O God, like your praise, reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with victory. God, in your temple, we ponder your love. Please stand to honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority 
over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a, as a testimony against them. So the twelve went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, during this time of pandemic, uh, we've been bombarded with the words lockdown, restriction, essential services, essential providers, front liners. Huh? See, every situation brings new language or new terminologies to help us understand what is going on. Huh? Essential services. During the first uh, lockdown last year, even churches were only allowed to have five people inside. So we had to close churches, but we still continued our celebration virtually. The second lockdown, state of emergency, we now we are allowed to have 10 people in our church, which means even the terminologies evolved. There is a greater understanding now that our faith is an essential component of, for us. It's an essential component of our health. If we want to be healthy, we need to nourish our faith as well, our spiritual life. And that's what we celebrate in our church. And that's why people would come to church. People would pray. And now people would come to receive the body of Christ in communion services. It's essential for us. Huh? Essential services, essential providers, essential things. In the gospel today, when Jesus sent his disciples, he asked them not to bring any other things except that which are essential. Huh? He said them, staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts. Wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Meaning just the essential. Because the rest, people will provide. The rest, you will get them. You will encounter them. You know, just bringing essential things will help us in our journey in life. It will make our life, our journey lighter. Huh? You know how before the pandemic, when people love to travel, sometimes you'll be away for one week and you have like four or five pieces of luggage. And that's why it makes it difficult and you're distressed, uh, stressed out because where are my bags? Where are we going to put it? It cannot, too many things, uh, non-essentials. And then during our uh, traveling and probably during the trip itself, we realize we don't need all of these things. We just want them to be with us because they gave us assurance but it was false assurance because at the end of the day we realized we don't even need them we carried with us things we don't even use we carried with us things we don't even need they we thought they give us assurance but only realizing at the end what they give is false assurance because we don't need them at all the gospel today reminds us to understand what is really essential in our lives. Just like the uh, order to the disciples, don't bring these things, just what is essential so that your journey will be light and that you'll be able to focus on your mission. My dear friends, as we continue to live in this pandemic, huh, let us think of what is really essential for us in order to survive this difficult time, this challenging time, what is really essential? And I hope we'll realize it is our faith that gives us authentic assurance, not false assurance, but authentic assurance 
Because God is always faithful. If we put on our faith, the armor of faith, what will happen is we will receive the Holy Spirit, we will be anointed, and we will be cured with all, from all our infirmities. And the invitation to repent, to make a return to the Lord. Let us pray that we may understand what is truly essential in our lives so that we don't have to carry unnecessary baggage with us, but only that which help us to live life to the fullest, to live an authentic life, a life in relationship with God. My dear friends, we pray that all our brothers and sisters may understand to value the essential component of our lives, our faith, our loved ones, our vocation to serve God and our brothers and sisters. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his, of all his holy church. Amen. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered for the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, throughout the ages. We may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under the, my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the Lord, the gracious, the merciful, has made a memorial of his wonders. He gives food to those who fear him. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that tomorrow is the first Friday of the month of February. The church will be open from 1 to 3 in the afternoon, and we will be available for confession or we'll celebrate the sacrament of reconciliation. And that is tomorrow, first Friday, from 1 to 3 in the afternoon. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Stay safe, my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you.